Tom McDonough, delighted to have you with us for this study in contrast. Colgate, a small school from central New York, just 2,800 students playing in its first ever national championship game in football. As a matter of fact, they've only played for one other national championship in any sport. That was in hockey in 1990, and they lost. Meanwhile, Delaware, a major state university with more than 16,000 students, a scholarship football program in contrast to Colgate. They've won five national titles, but they haven't won one since 1979 when they were a Division II program. I'm joined, as always, by Rod Gilmore and Mike Golick. Gentlemen, two schools with proud football traditions, and this year, two schools that have their conference offensive and defensive players of the year. Yeah, Delaware has a couple of stars who are transfers, came in to help them out. You look at the quarterback position, Andy Hall, transfer from Georgia Tech, a great quarterback, the player of the year offensively in the Atlantic 10. Yes, he can throw it. Yes, he can run with it, but what you'll like is his toughness. He has a separated, non-throwing shoulder that hasn't stopped him from running with the ball. Then, more toughness, how about on the other side of the ball? From Duke, Sean Johnson, defensive end. He is outstanding, defensive player of the year in the Atlantic 10. You can't block him with two guys, and if you run away from him, Mike Golick, he'll chase you down. I think you're gonna love watching him play as a former defensive lineman. Great players for Delaware, and a couple of great players for Colgate as well. As Sean mentioned, the Division I AA Player of the Year leads it for Colgate running back Jamal Branch. 430 carries on the year. To put that in perspective, the NFL record is 410 carries. Averaging about 28, 29 carries a game. He can run it inside, he can bounce it outside, and he can finish it off with 29 touchdowns. On the defensive side, Tim Lukavu, the linebacker, two-time Patriot League Defensive Player of the Year. This guy is everywhere. He'll be on the other side of the line. He'll be in pass drops. He'll be blitzing. He causes fumbles. You'll see number 41 all over the place. So, Sean, we've got great players on both sides of the ball for both these Team's going to be a great game. And yeah, we have two schools from the Northeast, and whether they are accustomed to, we have had wind driven snow during the pregame activities. Colgate and Delaware for the national title, the kickoff in a moment. It passes better than a West Coast offense. The newly redesigned 2004 Pontiac Grand Prix. Fuel for the soul. From Comedy Central on DVD. Kita, kita, get it. Buy the Emmy-nominated complete third season of South Park in a collector's edition box set. Extras include many commentaries from the creators on all 17 legendary episodes. DVD in stores now. Let's go, let's buy. Twelve seconds at a time. Need for Speed Underground. Rated E for everyone. EA Games. Challenge everything. We're back in Chattanooga and pleased to be joined for this national championship game tonight down on the field by Rob Stone. Well, Sean, meeting with the Delaware players and staff last night, one thing became apparent. They don't have to worry about Jamal Branch as much as they're really concerned about Colgate quarterback Chris Brown. Brown, a young man who can beat you with his arm and his legs, and the key to his game is getting out to the perimeter. Delaware knows that. They want to make him a pocket passer tonight. They're going to do two things. They're going to slant their defensive linemen and secondly do a little rope-a-dope. I love this with their linebackers bringing them around the edge. Colgate won the toss and deferred, so Delaware will receive the opening kickoff. 36 degrees and a gusty breeze with gusts over 15 miles per hour. Colgate will have the wind at its back here in the first quarter. The temperature expected to get in the mid-20s. We've already had some snowflakes here in Chattanooga this evening. Sean, there is a, a very, very strong wind right now at the backs of Colgate coming straight from end zone to end zone that is definitely going to have some effect on this game I believe Mike Raba is kicking off junior from Moscow Pennsylvania Colgate 15 and 0 the champions of the Patriot League a non-scholarship football program but they do give grant and aid to football players and most of their players are receiving some sort of financial assistance. It'll be David Bowler taking a knee in the end zone. 
And here comes Andy Hall. The senior from Shiraw, South Carolina, along the North Carolina border, the finalist for the Walter Payton Award as the Division I AA Player of the Year. The award then went to Colgate's Jamal Branch at the award ceremony here in Chattanooga last night. And he's in his second year as starting quarterback at Delaware after two seasons in a backup role, got into 10 games off the bench in two years at Georgia Tech. They'll open with one back and two tight ends, and it's Jermaine Bennett, their leading rusher, coming off the big day against Wofford on Saturday as the lone back. And through a big hole, and out near the 28-yard line, Will Arnold, a cornerback, made the tackle for Colgate. Bennett with the three wide receivers, Long, Boulder, and Blameyer, the starters, and Lavelle, an excellent blocking tight end. We'll also see a lot of two tight end sets from Delaware. And an excellent offensive line up front. The best of the group is Jason Neary's, the right guard, a senior. Neary's first team, All-Atlantic 10, and a co-captain. Also an excellent student with a 3.4 grade point average. That's another thing these programs have in common. Very good students. Ball throws quickly. It's caught by David Boulder for a first down to the 35-yard line. He's their leading receiver, 55th catch of the year for the sophomore from Cabina, California. It's a small but very quick defensive front for Colgate. Josh Sabo, the best of the four. Lukabu, the team's leading tackler with Miller and Tyson. And in the secondary, Arnold, Minot, McCune, and Anderson. Anderson's been playing with a fractured bone in his foot, and we'll tell you more about that as we go along. It's a no-huddle offense, not necessarily a hurry-up offense for Delaware, but they do go generally without a huddle. And Hall is throwing again a little too high and behind Bowler near midfield. Bill Arnold had the coverage for the Raiders. Well, you mentioned a couple of things in the lineup, Sean, that we have to look out for, Rod, and that was the large offensive line, a couple of 300-pounders for Delaware. They'll take, try and take advantage of that with a little smash mouth. And the undersized Colgate defense, you'll see them moving and shifting around to try not to give Delaware one look. Hey, you see Delaware trying to test them out because you get nine yards running on your first play. You figure, yep. we'll run the ball again. But no, they're trying to show different alignments to figure out what Colgate will do early. Second and 10, Delaware, 14 and one. Their only loss was during the regular season at Northeastern against a very good Huskies team. Right into the middle of the line goes Bennett. And he was driven back by Jared Nepa, a backup linebacker, sophomore from Carbondale, Pennsylvania. Well, the key for Colgate is going to have to be, again, with the undersized as the linebackers either playing off blocks and how quickly they can do it, or if they can hit gaps or have enough, bring enough men up, eight in the box at least, to have one unaccounted for, and that person has to make the play. Delaware best in the Atlantic 10 in third down conversions. They were 8-1 and one in conference play, shared the A-10 title with UMass, but got the automatic bid into the playoffs by virtue of their win head-to-head -head against UMass. All kinds of running room for Hall, and a first down as Andy goes out of bounds at the 50-yard line. Well, both quarterbacks in this game are capable of doing just that, pulling it down and running, and that's a 14-yard gain for Hall. Well, we talked about Hall's toughness. Remember, he's the guy who's playing with a bad left shoulder, a separated shoulder. He hasn't run as much in the playoffs because of that, but this, this being the final game of the season, you think, what the heck? You know, run it. We've got plenty of time to recover after this one. <laughs> Here's their second leading rusher for the season behind only Jermaine Bennett. He remains the lone back again. Two tight ends and two wide receivers. Colgate shows blitz. There's one of those design runs for Hall that Rod was just talking about. He goes down to the Colgate 43, a gain of eight. It'll be second down and two. The safety, Sean McCune, made the tackle. Mike, you were talking about the size difference. You see here, no ability for the linebackers to get off of the block because of the big size. Bennett is. Delaware picked up the tempo that time, but didn't catch Colgate off guard as Bennett's dropped for a loss by Nick Susco, the senior from Tallinn, Connecticut, part of that undersized but quick defensive front for Colgate. And to continue on your point, Rod, that was a that was a run blitz. They're trying to get Delaware in a second and 12, second and 13. And one thing that happens if you run blitz, if you get by the first level, which is exactly what happened, you're going to pick up some big yards. Well, 
with one of the tight ends, Blyler, into the backfield now on third down. And two. Antoine Jenkins stopped for a loss. Jared Nepa again with a second big defensive play. They brought Jenkins in at tailback. He's much bigger than Bennett. Jenkins goes about 240 pounds. He ran right into Nepa. Well, speed here. Uh, that Neary's the guard pulled and Nepa came in right behind him when you're undersized you better be fast He comes in behind the block and make the player always talk if you're coming in behind you better make the tackle Mike Weber punts averaging 38 and a half per punt And it's down at the 19 yard line A 25 yard punt as we look at Chris Brown Jr. from Rockledge, Florida undefeated as the starting quarterback at Colgate. He became the starter at the end of last season when Tom McCune was injured. Chris started the last three games. They won the ball, and they've won all 15 this year. And as Rod Stone told you, the Delaware coach is particularly concerned about the dual threat Brown, who can throw and run. And we look for Colgate to try to throw a lot early in the game to set up their run. Brown throws early, right on target to Luke Graham, their leading receiver for the 74th reception of the year. Graham and Gerald both outstanding. Gerald with just two fewer receptions than Graham. Google Amadia blocking fullback for Branch and Frazier in all-conference tight end. Up front, the only returning starter from a year ago is Mark Scalafani, the right guard, the first team Division I AA All-American this year. For a new group, they have done exceptionally well, obviously, leading the way for the record-setting performance by Branch, who gets the call for the first time and shows his power as he ran over Mike Adams to the 37-yard line. Defensively for Delaware. An outstanding front, perhaps the best in the nation in 1AA this year, led by the All-American Sean Johnson. The linebackers are Mulhern, the third member of his family to play at Delaware with Davis and Moore, a former walk-on. And in the secondary, Adams' return from a broken leg at midseason made a huge difference as Delaware has allowed just one touchdown in each of its three wins here in the 1AA playoffs. Brown's pass incomplete and almost intercepted by John Mulhern. That'll bring up third down for Colgate. There was a mi miscommunication there. That pass was going nowhere. As close as to a Delaware player, that was about it. But, Sean, you said it play one. They want to get Chris Brown on the corner, and they did with the completed pass. I'll tell you what, if they can loosen up that defense, then the hammer comes with Jamal Branch. Yeah, but on third down, they have to make sure they can handle Sean Johnson, right. number 96, because he can wreak havoc. Okay, Coach Dick Biddle said it's important that we get off to a good start. We don't necessarily need to score first, but a couple of first downs just to get us into the flow of the game would really help us relax. Brown with a lot of time, and it is almost intercepted by Mondo Davis. The junior from Newport News, Virginia, had his hands on it. A couple of near picks by the Delaware defense, and Colgate will punt. And this has been one of the few trouble spots for Colgate this year. Jason Sutton is their only freshman starter, the punter. He's had two blocks here in the playoffs. And Jesse O'Neill of Delaware has blocked a punt in each of the first two games in the playoffs. He didn't get one last week against Wofford. Sidney Hagebrook, an excellent return man. All the way out to the 41-yard line. 42-yard punt, 21-yard return. No score. Colgate and Delaware playing for the national championship in Chile, Chattanooga. The NCAA Women's Basketball Championship coming in March. Oh, no, thanks. I'm watching my figure. Imagine 
zooming to anywhere in a split second. Imagine 40 times mega zoom and lightning fast autofocus. Imagine what we can do together. The new Dimage Z1, another digital breakthrough from Konica Minolta. Today we're so busy, even our stomachs multitask, as in heartburn, acid indigestion, and gas. So there's new Rolaids multi-symptom. We eat and run, scarf lunch and talk shop, deal with kids, bats, balls, and pranks, heavy on the mustard. New Rolaids multi-symptom relieves heartburn, acid indigestion, and unlike Tom's, gas that causes uncomfortable bloating and pressure with the most effective anti-gas ingredient. Yeah, multitasking, multi-symptom. New Rolaids multi-symptom, fast relief for the way we live. Delaware on offense for the second time. No score. Nearly five minutes gone by in this national championship game. Andy Hall out of the shotgun. Antoine Jenkins takes the handoff. And it's Jared Neppa again off to an outstanding start for the Raiders defense. Casey Keeler. Delaware graduate. He was on the team the last time they won a national championship in 1979. He was a linebacker for Tubby Raymond when they won the Division II title. He still wears that national championship ring. Jenkins bursts into Colgate territory and more. First down, they'll mark him down at the 43-yard line, a gain of 18. Matt Speck made the tackle for Colgate. They, they changed the tempo right, on right. him that time and got to the line of scrimmage and went really fast and had them outnumbered on the right side with tight ends over there and just blew by him. Well, the D-line, the defense has to be ready as soon as they get down and, and set on the ball. They're waiting for the checks from the linebackers, but uh, Delaware smart getting up and running plays. The gun, Hall, throws short for Justin Long. He's their third leading receiver, but that's his 47th catch. They have a productive trio of sophomores in Bowler, Long, and Ingram, who have combined for more than 250 catches, and they're not yet at the end of their sophomore season. Mike, I want to go back to that point about the change in tempo. You see them do it here again where they've gone back to a longer count now, and that does have an impact on the defense, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. Now, now you're, what, what happens is that they'll mix it up, and if, you, if they do the longer count, they'll get to the line and try and get the defense to get in their set, and then they know what play to call for. Another design run for Hall, and this time not much. To the 40-yard line before he was driven back by Sean McCune, a first-team All-Patriot League safety, who's been a four-year starter at Colgate. His brother Tom was also their starting quarterback last year before Tom got hurt and Brown took over. He started the last three games of the season last year. And was 18. Ed Pinkham, the defensive coordinator for Colgate, told us that Sean McCune is the glue of that defense. He makes all their calls, and they do a lot of the line of scrimmage. They're a big zone blitz team. Again, looks to run. Now he pulls up and looks to throw and has a man open. Great pass. Feathered through to David Bowler for a first down to the 20-yard line. Will Arnold made the tackle. Great poise by Hall and then perfect touch to lob that to the open bowler for a gain of 20. Oh, Sean, you said it. Watch him tuck the ball here. And that's going to be a signal to the defense that you come up for him. See him tuck the ball under his left arm, but then he pulls it back out. And you see how the defense gets really rattled, confused by it, and they drop off into coverage at the last second too late. He wanted Blamey at first and held onto the ball and waited for Bowler to clear. It's an excellent job. Empty backfield now. Three wide receivers for Delaware. Looking for the game's first score. Hall will pull it down. <laughs> now he retreats the throw and throw it away. We're going to see a lot of this tonight from these two quarterbacks. Well, you have to question, though, Mike, running Hall that much this early in the ball game. Yeah. Remember, he's got the bad shoulder. They haven't run him much in the playoffs. If you get him Nick now, early in the game, you've got a problem. Yeah, absolutely do. But I'll tell you what, he has all day to throw the ball. Good job by that old line right now. They've given up just 21 sacks on the year, less than, much less than two a game. 
Colgate has 34 sacks on the other right now. They're not getting no pressure at all. Out of the gun on second and 10 from the Colgate 20. A man wide open. That's Justin Long again inside the five and powering down to the two-yard line. Ainsworth Monat made the tackle. They'll mark the ball near the three, first and goal for Delaware after a 17-yard pickup. Great job. The blitz is going to come right here, so the pass is going to go right there. It's a great job by Hall. Do you see that both backs are backers blitzing, and he goes right where Luke Boo was? Makes an easy completion. Great job of finding the hole. Tight end Blyler in the backfield. Jenkins, the tailback. Jenkins, touchdown, Delaware. Excellent drive for Delaware, guys, and I put a lot of that on Andy Hall. You mentioned it, Rod, when he pulled the ball in like he was going to run, then pulled it back out of his left arm and threw it. Got the pass waiting for Bowler to clear. Good job of going for the hot read on the blitz. Smart plays, finding the right guys in the right situation. They did a nice job of anticipating. When you talked about no pressure on the quarterback, they anticipated the blitz coming to be ready to go to the hot read on the big plays. The extra point good by Brad Shushman. And midway through the first quarter, the Clayton Blue Hens of Delaware have a 7 to nothing lead. gift of a DVD player or video game system to make the holidays blue because it can't be hooked up. So get a stereo RF modulator from Radio Shack. It delivers full stereo sound and hooks up your electronics to TVs without the proper input. Sorry, baby. I should have checked the TV. The stereo RF modulator from Radio Shack. You've got questions. We've got answers. People loved it so much, we brought it back. The big, bold flavor of Arby's Italian beef and provolone. With beef oven roasted so it's tender and juicy, not greasy. Then marinated in Italian seasonings with authentic provolone on a soft baguette. If you haven't tried one yet, you don't know what you're missing. Gee, other than that, you have a really nice announcer voice. Thanks, Sarah. Excuse me, someone's at the drive-thru. <clears throat> Welcome to Arby's. Have you tried our new Italian beef and provolone? What are you eating today? Welcome to the house of beer. We have 170 kinds of beer from all over the world. The beers are color-coded and separated by country, style, and color. Call me when you're ready. I'm ready. All the Sam Adams. Yeah. yeah. You can go around the world and not find a better beer than Samuel Adams. Always a good decision. Three-yard touchdown run by Antoine Bennett. Antoine Jenkins, pardon me, having an eight-play, 60-yard drive. Took over two and a half minutes. A big play on the third down completion. Hall to Boulder. That went for 20 yards. Well, Delaware will kick off into the breeze. Brad Shushman, the transfer from Louisville, will kick it with Mike Christie and Dwayne Long back deep for Colgate. There's Christie, who was a 100-meter state champion in high school in New York State. And the wind has blown the ball off the tee. I'll tell you what, what a shot. What a great drive for Delaware into the wind. You know, a lot of times you look at your scoring opportunities in a windy situation, and they took that one into the wind. Shushman will try again. They've had some difficulties on kickoff coverage this year. Shushman's made three touchdown saving tackles. The kickoff mishandled by Dwayne Long, a transfer from the University of Nebraska. And as a result, he makes it only to the 22-yard line, just an eight-yard return. 
Monday, 5.30 Eastern Time on ESPN. Capital One Bowl Week continues with Mazda, the Tangerine Bowl, with NC State taking on Kansas. The Wolfpack, of course, led by Phillip Rivers, more than 4,000 passing yards this season. It's his last game for NC State. Kansas making its first bowl appearance since 1995. They were two and 10 last year. Great job by Coach Mark Mangino in a bowl game in just his second year. Jamal Branch with a flag down. Tackled by Mark Moore, who had 10 tackles last week against Wofford. But there is a flag. An Ohio Valley Conference officiating crew led by the referee Mike Purcell. Going against Colgate. Going back quickly to that bowl game, guys. Philip Rivers, it seems like he's been in college forever, coming in and starting <laughs> very early in his career. One of a, a few uh, NFL hopefuls, one of the top quarterbacking crews to get the call. Only six men on the line of scrimmage against the offense. Five yard penalty for the previous spot. Repeat first down. And you have the you have Rivers, you have, as we look at, at Coach Dick Fettel, we have Rivers, Eli Manning, uh, Ben Roethlisberger, who declared coming out uh, after his junior year at Miami of Ohio, their big win in the GMAC Bowl, JP Lozman. But the Phillip Rivers gonna be right there, big strong arm for the NFL. Back at the 17-yard line, it's Branch powering ahead to the 22. He was tripped up by Mondo Davis. Been an amazing record-setting season for Branch, shattering so many marks in Division I AA college football. This from a young man who was out of school last year. As he said, I needed to grow up a little bit. He got his personal and academic house in order. Wasn't even sure he'd be the starter in their opening game. He carried the ball just six times for four yards against Georgetown. But he became the starter thereafter and has led Colgate in one of the great seasons in the history of one double-A football. Nice throw and a good catch by John Frazier, the tight end. Mark Moore made the tackle, but it's a first down for the Raiders out near the 37-yard line. A gain of 13 on the completion to the senior from Enwell, New York, near Binghamton. Well, this was a bootleg, but the interesting thing about this play is that they took Branch out of the backfield and split him out as a wide receiver to really cause some attention to go that way by the Delaware defense. Another way of making sure you can get Brown to the edge. Frazier, also an academic All-American, 3.7 grade point average in sociology and anthropology. Brown stumbled a couple of times and is finally taken down. It'll be a sack back at the 33-yard line. Tom Parks and Mondo Davis there for Delaware. Well, we talk about Sean Johnson. You talked about him at the top rod. Here he is forcing Chris Brown to pull it down. He's going to come on the edge. Nice little rip move, just enough to make Chris Brown pull it up, and then there's no lane for him to run through. So a lot of times, even when Johnson doesn't get the sack, and oh, by the way, he has 13 this year, he's going to force the quarterback to do something he doesn't want to do. He's out there pretty wide in sort of a nine technique yeah. outside. He there. likes to line up wide and really try and come off that corner. Second and 14, and a rare handoff to the fullback. It's Eric Gugliamati, and they weren't fooled. John Mulhern in on the stop for Delaware. He made the stop, but Brian Jennings made the play, number 84. Nice penetration. Forcing, forcing the east-west run instead of that north-south running. Good teamwork there on that Delaware defense. Giving up just 118 yards on the ground per game. What a nice test going against the top back and top player in Division I AA and Jamal Branch. Well, they really shut everybody down in the playoffs in the running game. Out of the shotgun on third down and 18. Under pressure, Brown hit as he throws, and it's incomplete. Yeah, guess who? John Johnson, <laughs> yeah. the transfer from Duke. Well, you start out thinking, we'll see if we can block him man on man. And then you find out quickly that doesn't work. So one of the adjustments you'll see from Colgate, get another guy over there to help once Johnson gets by the right. first guy. Chip in, you chip with a, a, a back, or if you have a tight end of that side, you pop him before the tight end goes out. You have to find a way to slow this kid down. Bad snap, back to Sutton. He's in trouble, just did get it off, but it won't go very far. Out of bounds near the 34-yard line. That is a six-yard punt for Sutton. So 
So Delaware will take over with great field position. Already leading seven to nothing. Home is where the hoop is. With ESPN Full Court, you'll get more than 450 additional games of college basketball. To order, call your local cable company, DirecTV at 1-800-DIRECTV, or Dish Network at 1-800-333-DISH. Hear that? It's opportunity knocking. Wake up! If you are trained in advertising or marketing, or if you are a professional sales manager, if the idea of joining a tremendous growth industry in one of America's premier companies appeals to you, open the door to your new career at Comcast. Due to expansion, Comcast Advertising Sales is looking for organized individuals to join our successful and growing sales team in northern and western New Jersey. Comcast offers competitive wages, benefits, and a challenging, positive, and rewarding work atmosphere. Apply online or fax us your resume. There are more than one million pornographic websites on the Internet. Now, from America's favorite family-friendly network comes KidSafe Internet access with Paxway. Paxway's filter technology blocks virtually 100% of all offensive material, so it never gets to your computer or your kids. Paxway blocks everything that it says it blocks. You know your kids are safe with Paxway. Call now and experience the family-friendly Internet with Paxway. Paxway Internet. Kids safe and parent approved. We mentioned the problems in the punt game for Colgate, and that time a bad snap by Jeremy Worst. And that has Delaware in great shape. First and ten of the Colgate 34, already leading seven to nothing. Are the Fighting Blue Hens of the University of Delaware? Wayne Bennett back in and running back. Jenkins was in there on the touchdown drive. Pump fake and a man open, caught by David Bowler. And he's inside the 15 and down at the 11-yard line. The transfer from the University of Southern California for the 23-yard reception. Well, this is a nicely designed play. You see the pump fake. They ran off the safety inside so he wouldn't come over for this play. And then Bola goes back out, and the ball is right on the money. Oh, I don't can't compete like that. Like 200 meter state champ. High school in Georgia. Can't get run by. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Two tight ends in the game now for Delaware. On first and ten from the Colgate 11. The option for Hall. He's in trouble and goes down at the 15-yard line. Josh Sabo. Ned Pinkham, the defensive coordinator, told us is the best nose guard in the country, in his opinion. Made a terrific play. The drop Hall for a loss. We're at the Division I AA Football National Championship game in Chattanooga, Tennessee. The fourth seed, Colgate, against the number two seed, Delaware. They are two of the 16 teams that made the one AA playoffs this year. Tom McDonough with Rod Gilmore, Mike Golick, and Rob Stone. Delighted to have you with us. Play clock running out. Apparently, Hall just did get the snap off. Running for his life. He's across the line of scrimmage. He's inside the five and near a first down. They get a first down at the one. Credit Ryan Miller with the tackle. What looked to be another loss for Delaware turns into a 12-yard game. Is he tough or what? He takes a shot into the shoulder to numb the pain before the ball game, and now he just takes off. And watch him dip his shoulder at the end there. Oh, he took a shot, too, by Miller. I thought he was going to get down. I think he saw that goal line, saw he had a couple guys out there blocking, so he turned it up. He's but, got that, that separated shoulder, yep. and he you know, takes the needle before sure. the game, and he doesn't seem to care about it. He well, just throws hey, his shoulder in there. It's championship game, man. You can't <laughs> care. You got to do what you got to do to get on that field and play as they measure for the first down. Don't you get a little queasy when you see them come with that needle? Absolutely not, man. Let me tell you what. <laughs> I took a lot of those in my day. I didn't care. You know what? I, I had that answer. I didn't care. I was going to play. May not have been the smartest thing in the world to do sometimes. Sometimes, you know, people say, well, don't you think what you, it's going to happen to you down the road? You know what? You don't. <laughs> you don't. You think, I mean, yeah. this is the national championship. That's what you're thinking about. I'm serious. That's yeah. the mentality. Yeah, he, he's been doing this for about yeah. three or four weeks you now. Just, you don't care yeah. what, what, what effect it has in your body down the line. You want to play ball. I, 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 
great thing to see. Great, great competitor. Here's Bennett to the goal line. He did not get in on first and goal. It'll be second and goal from just a couple of inches. Well, all of those ligaments that connect his collarbone to his shoulder blade, talking about Andy Hall, are damaged. He is going to have to have surgery when the season is over. He was at Georgia Tech. Got the call from Delaware when they learned he was considering transferring. They talked to him about the program. He said, I'll come up for a visit, and if everything you say is true, I'll be your quarterback. He went up there, found that everything was as they said it was, but he's very happy in Newark. Bennett bounces outside for the touchdown. Jermaine Bennett gives Delaware a 13 to nothing lead. It's all going right for Delaware right now, and it's being led by the man we're talking about. Andy Hall, he's setting everything up, and here you see Bennett get the payoff. Before it was Jenkins who got the payoff, but Hall is running around setting everything up for these guys. Colgate's building themselves a, a bad hole, but this is exactly what Delaware is used to, guys. They've outscored their opponents in the first half of the postseason 91 to 10. And as we saw, 60 to nothing in the first quarter. It'll be 61 if that one makes it through, but it's no good. Shushman with a low snap hook. We can relate to that. That hit the upright. He had made 43 in a row before that miss. So it's 13 to nothing after a five-play, 34-yard touchdown drive after the problem with the punt snap. Let's check in with Rob Stone. Well, Sean, time for my political roundtable session. We are joined now by the governor of Delaware, Ruth Ann Minner. And, and Ruth Ann, try and give us a sense of just how important this university, this football program is in your state. This is the enthusiasm of Delaware. Our gang's here, our gang's cheering the Blue Hens on. We're having a wonderful evening. And on my flip side, Senator Joe Biden of the Foreign Relations Committee, a guy who played freshman football here right, for the Blue Hens. Tell right. me about your football career career it was a hell of a lot worse than my political career <laughs> i thought i could be an all-american i couldn't make it so i decided to be a senator you know what else could i do you know actually i had a, there's a great tradition of winning football in delaware the world is getting to know us now but we were winning national championships before they had this playoff division back in the 60s when i was there and i wanted the bcs to understand <laughs> we play it out we play it out in double a we love the pot shots at the bcs and be honest oh, with me i mean nuts hey, Ted Koppel's got nothing on me, right? Absolutely nothing. Thank you, Senator. You got my vote. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Rob doesn't even live in a state. How about Rob on a first-name basis with the governor? Look, he's here. You wonder what, he, wonder what angle he's working. Huh? And he's a Colgate grad. That's the governor of Delaware. He turns yeah. and says, well, tell me, Ruth Ann. Uh, <laughs> you wonder like that. Stoner is a Colgate graduate. Among their famous alums, by the way, Andy Rooney. Yeah, who was a football uh, team member in the late 30s under coach Andy Kerr, a legendary coach at Colgate for whom their home field in Hamilton, New York is named. Andy Rooney played ball? Yeah, he didn't get in much. I don't he imagine he did. Not better, but we have confirmed that he was <laughs> on the team. We, we, do, we, we are sure he was on the team. They have some interesting wow. uh, alums at Colgate, not only Andy Rooney, but in the spirit of the season. Did you know the gentleman who wrote Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer is a Colgate graduate. Really? Yes. The composer Johnny song. Marks. Maybe we can all sing it together a little later. Here's Branch. Powering out across the 30 to the 31. And Charles Adams, a cartoonist whose drawings led to the Adams Family TV show, is also a Colgate graduate. Fountain of knowledge. The TV show is much better than the movie, though. Right? The yeah. Adams Family. The uh, um, the Adams family started. They need their offense like it, to get started here because yeah. well, it's not, not been a good showing so far for uh, the Raiders. Formerly the Red Raiders. They dropped the red from their nickname three years ago. Awkward looking fake handoff by Brown. He's dropped. Now the ball comes out. They are ruling that a fumble. He got knocked down by Dominic Santoli. The Hens have the ball at the 18-yard line. And, Sean, what was it Dick Biddle said to us yesterday? He said he worried about the first quarter and his team being too tight and making mistakes. We've seen a couple. That's another one there. And Brown is coming off the, with his left arm dangling a little bit. Good job by Santoli making great penetration. The ball's out. 
Brown gets hit. He was running off Dangle in his left arm. You see him kind of grabbing it there. And again, I talked about Delaware, 97 to 10. They've out 91 to 10. They've outscored their opponents in the first half in the playoffs. They have not trailed at all in these one double-A playoffs. Their first three victories were all in home games in Newark. They're also plus 19 for the season now in turnovers. That's the hallmark of a championship team. Jenkins, the ball carrier, and Josh Sabo took him down. It'll be second down and very little gain on that play for Delaware. Meanwhile, terrible news for Colgate. If Brown is seriously injured, that would be a devastating blow. Yeah, again, because remember Delaware said that was a big concern of them. Chris Brown getting the corner and really opening things up for Jamal Branch. Hasn't happened yet. But well, there's your backup. Mike Saracino. Seen just a very little bit of action this season. Hall on the keeper turns the corner and goes out of bounds near the five-yard line. Well, he He'll cares. mark him out at the four. He carries his shoulders hurting, huh? I mean, they're running design runs for him, too. <laughs> Which they have not been doing. Here's a guy who hasn't even practiced for the last couple of weeks. All he's done is walk through a couple of communications-related things, but he hasn't been throwing the ball in practice, taking any contact. He just went for 14 there. Well, you know, good game planning then maybe. The, the coach is thinking that Colgate didn't think Andy Howell was going to do much running. No reason that he should expect it. Halton yeah. banged up all season long. Hip, shoulder, back, hand. There's Jenkins who scored the first touchdown. He's been alternating at running back with Bennett. They've dubbed themselves Cadillac and Porsche. Jenkins, the bigger guy, the Cadillac, and Bennett, the smaller, speedier version. Cadillac and Porsche? Well, they played another team that the running backs called themselves Thunder and Lightning. They beat that team, so they thought, you know, we really need a nickname, and those guys have a nickname, so they came up with Cadillac and Porsche. Cadillac and Porsche. But aren't some Porsches better than other Porsches? Well, this guy's pretty good. Tremendous game last week, 186 in the win over Wofford. Guy was almost dispatched from the team by Casey Keeler when he first became a coach. That looked like a busted play, and Hall's dropped for a loss back at the five-yard line. Robert Hanna at the bottom of the pile for the Raiders, the senior from Akron, Ohio. I know it's going well now, but, Rod, do you feel like they might go to the well once too often with Andy Hall? Yeah, and you would think that seeing the injury on the other side of the field to Brown that they might think twice about how many times they let Hall run the ball. And Casey Keeler told us the other other day, he said, hey, I was so concerned about him and his injuries, I sent him to acupuncture yep. during the season. That is the end of the first quarter. Meanwhile, Chris Brown is heading into the locker room for some medical attention. 13 to nothing, fighting blue hands, and they're knocking on the door again. What were we thinking about when we gave the Kia Sedona a powerful standard engine? What were we thinking about when we gave it such a great warranty and priced it thousands less than our competitors? What were we thinking about when we designed it to get the government's highest safety rating? What were we thinking? We were thinking about Scotty, Nanny, Poppy, Uncle Larry, Derek, Eric, Dad, and Mr. Mophead. The always family-friendly Kia Sedona. Get remaining 2003 Sedonas from 17615 after 3000 cash back. Hurry, offer ends soon. Oh, no, thanks. I'm watching my figure. Va. Va. This is Panasonic Plasma HD TV. Breathtaking design and a picture that's in a class by itself. With a contrast ratio up to 3,000 to 1. It's simply beautiful. On or off. Oh, yeah. Plasma HD TV, Panasonic. Ideas for life. Jimbo! Hey! How's the weather? 
Now I'm making a smoothie. With AT&T One Rate USA, you can make all the calls you want from home for one flat rate. I would expect the same from... It's the phone plan that encourages you to talk. No, it's the blender. No, the blender. I hate the desert. And talk. Oh my goodness, when did that happen? And talk. How long have you guys been dating? Call anyone, anywhere in the country, whenever you want. What? It's all for one flat monthly rate with your choice of calling features. No, I'm just coming in. I gotta go clean up. This place is a wreck. Call 1-800-ATT-4ALL to sign up. AT&T One Rate USA. It's the perfect plan for those who like to take advantage of a good thing. Or in this case, your mother's good thing. Start of the second quarter. Colgate trailing 13 to nothing in Delaware. Looking at third down and goal from the five. Trying to add to their 13 point lead. They spread the field with three wide receivers and Jenkins is the running back lined up to the left of Andy Hall. Hall after the pump fake throws for a touchdown. David Bowler. Bowler, the outside receiver on that, makes the inside move on Will Arnold, who's 5'8". Bowler, 6'2". That's your old forward position, just kind of trying to wall off and get the pass thrown into you. Yeah, that's a great job by Bowler because a corner's responsibility there is to not let the receiver inside, inside at all. And Bowler does a great job to get in there, so it's a direct throw for Hall. Sushman, who hit the upright with his last PAT, makes this one, and it's 20 to nothing. Delaware dominating the football game with 148 yards of offense to just 25 for Colgate. Five-yard touchdown pass after the turnover by Colgate. all these wars that the doom of our time shall be decided here we make our stand we come to it at last right to t for team ea games so, what's your day like? Well, the dry cleaning needs to be dropped off, the groceries picked up, the dog walked in, gifts for your mom and dad. So you gonna take care of all that? No, I'm gonna give it to my personal assistant. Hello, we're your personal assistants. Now you can win $20,000 that can get you all the help you need with Visa Personal Helper Services. From November to December, use any Visa card and you are automatically entered to win with a new winner selected for every day of the promotion. Good eggnog. This holiday season, Visa is everywhere you want to be. Tool. Leatherman. Thanks. Leatherman. Now you're ready. Hey! Sean McDonough with Mike Golick, Rod Gilmore, and Rob Stone. Back in Chattanooga, Tennessee. The Delaware scored again after a fumble by Colgate's Chris Brown. David Boulder, a five-yard reception. They had to go all that far, had they, Sean? No, bad 34 snap. yards yeah. after the uh, short punt after the bad snap and 18 yards. And, and here comes Chris Brown. He went to the locker room for medical attention, but looks to be okay as he runs back out. It's a left hand or wrist area, it looked like, as Rob Stone was telling us. Remember, that's his non-throwing hand, so I'm sure he'll be back. Bushman kicks off with the win, and it's Mike Christie from the goal line. And he will not reach the 20. 
Outstanding special teams coverage by Keandre Hepburn. The freshman from Hollywood, Florida. Just a 13-yard run back by Christie. Let's go back to the touchdown. Here's the matchup out here. You've got Bowler on Arnold. That's the key. Now watch how they create space inside. They run the slot receiver away. That creates all this space here. Bowler gets Arnold to go upfield with the fake fall down and then comes back inside where they created all that space by taking the slot receiver inside. Got to keep take that inside away. Arnold's got to stay to the inside of that receiver. With a new quarterback in the game, Mike Saraceno in for Colgate. It's Jamal Branch, tackled by Tom Parks. There's Saraceno with Brown on the sideline with his helmet on, warming up, and perhaps he'll come back in. Saraceno has thrown just four passes this season. Two for four, sophomore from Sunrise, Florida. Suffered a knee injury near the end of last year in a JB game that ended his season early. That is a lateral to JB Gerald. And he's to the 19 for a short game, tackled by Mike Adams. Let's get more on Brown's injury from Rob Stone. Sean, I spoke with Chris Brown when he came out of the locker room. I said, are you going to go? He said, yes. What has happened is in the first quarter of the semifinal game last week, he bruised his left hand. It swelled up all week. He took no snaps at all during the week leading up to this game. And obviously, he re-injured it on that fumble right there. But he told me he's going to be able to go. Sean, that's interesting because we saw him in practice yesterday, and he had that glove on, and he did not not take any snaps and when he was handing the ball off he handed the ball off with his right hand not his left hand which was unusual for a quarterback Saraceno throws complete to Mike Christie who makes a nice move and gets out to the 36 yard line nice poise by Saraceno who's played very little he had the heat coming and put it right on the money for 17 to Christie. Let me tell you, four passes on the year coming in this game, rolling left and lobbing a nice pass in. What a great job. He did get, was able to stop and square his shoulders up, but I'll tell you what, that's, that was a tough throw for a guy who isn't in there a lot for any quarterback. He's just 5'9", 185 pounds. Good play action fake. Saraceno might have been over the line when he threw. And there's a flag down. It's an incomplete pass and very nearly intercepted. And it looked like they might have hit Graham early. I don't see a flag near the line of scrimmage. It looked like Saraceno was across the line when he threw that ball. The Delaware coaches are going nuts saying that he was past the line, Sean. So Colgate's going to get the penalty for them on the pass interference but they may have gotten away with one pass interference the defense 15 yard penalty to the previous spot automatic first down see the interference downfield and with his off hand around his waist just how detrimental that was. But they get the call. Colgate certainly needed something. And off to Jamal Branch, and he ran into Mondo Davis. Second team, All-Atlantic 10 linebacker. Defensive coordinator Dave Cohen, who does a great job for Delaware, said Davis is probably as talented as anybody he's ever coached. And there's a couple more brothers on the way. His twin brothers who are redshirting Miguel and Marquez Davis at Delaware this year. And now Brown is back in the ball game. And so we'll see if he can actually handle the snaps and, and throw the ball as well. Brown throws, and it's caught in traffic by Dwayne Long. Leon Clark made the tackle. They're short of the first down at the 43-yard line. They need about three and a half more to move the chain. It was a nice throw by Brown because the house was coming. The house was coming and starting to fall in around them. And he just hung right in there and threw the ball, put them in a very manageable third and four situation. That house always includes Sean Johnson. Yes, it huh? does. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's, <laughs> he's the main one trying to tear the bricks away. <laughs> Colgate going into a gusty breeze. You could hear it during that pass interference call on the referee's microphone. 
It is really whistling. That's the throw right on the money to J.B. Gerald for another first down for Colgate. Their best drive of the night as they move inside the 30 after a 15-yard game. And a nice job by the off receiver who ran the out pattern in front of where this ball is thrown to create space. You'll see Graham show up number four. You'll see him underneath just a little bit. There he is. He ran flat, which pulled the defense up and created the throwing lane for Brown to get the ball in there. Well, some snowflakes starting to fall, and maybe that's what's motivating Colgate. They're a great <laughs> blizzard team. They've proven that this year. Matt Kabelski, the fullback from Tewksbury, Massachusetts, with the carry. Their first two victories in the playoffs this year were both played in near blizzard conditions in Hamilton, New York. They beat UMass, a terrific team out of the Atlantic 10, 19 to 7. And then a week later, Beat Western Illinois 28-27. They finally got to go to the Sunshine and play for Lauderdale last week against Florida Atlantic to earn the victory that brought them to the national title game. On second and long, Branch had some running room outside, bounced it back inside, and is near a first down, about a yard and a half shy at the 20. Dave Camburn, the reserve safety who plays a lot, made the tackle. What I like about... Jamal Branch is, you know, he's not overly fast. He doesn't have a lot of moves. He knows what he does well, and he just does it. He, he had the chance to break to the outside on that one, but he knew he didn't have the speed to get there, and he was going to get caught. So he cuts it back, and he's got great level of pads. He got him low and said, I'm going to get the rest of what I'm going to get. He knows his limitations. He knows what he does well, and he does them exceptionally well. Everything 151 yards per game rushing is Branch. They look to throw on third and two, and it's incomplete. Interesting call, guys. You would think here they're in four-down territory. Going into the win, you can't kick a field goal. Down no. 20 to nothing, you're going to go for it. You think you might run the ball twice yeah, with Branch. Yeah, I think you're exactly right about that, Sean. That's what you what you would expect them to do. Maybe they tried to outthink Delaware on that instead of going with their strength and running the ball a couple times in a row. Now, Mike, I want to follow up your point on Branch. I like what he does, but I think he's carried the ball too much this season. To me, 430 carries for anybody, that's way too much. It's like a, a young pitcher giving him 150 pitch limit, and you're going to wear out his arm. And wear out this guy's body. Fourth and two. Here comes a blitz. Brown throws under duress, and it's incomplete. In and out of the hands of John Frazier, the tight end. And Delaware takes over on downs. Well, we haven't had any issues yet with play calling, I think, until now. Sean, you started to say it, and, and Rod, you kept going, and I'll finish it. Those two plays there, didn't like either one of them. They get the best running back in the nation this year. He set the all-time record for a single season with more than 2,200 rushing yards, and he doesn't touch the ball in third and two or fourth and two when you absolutely have to get a first down. Yeah, not, uh, I don't think that was smart play calling at all there, uh, and there was really no option for Chris Brown to run either. But go, go back to Branch, 430 uh, attempts. As I said in the open, the NFL record, Jamal Anderson, 1998, 410 attempts. The Division I record, 1981, Marcus Allen, 403 attempts. So that's the... This guy's just passing up everybody, but that is a, that is a strain. Rod, you're absolutely yeah. right. But, you know, when Marcus Allen ran it 400 times, he hardly got hit. He had that great big offensive yeah. line. He was just running the ball up and down the field. <laughs> we talked to Jamal yesterday. He said he feels pretty good. Other than the fact he had to take a final exam yesterday morning in Chattanooga with African American Studies. Low throw. They'll rule that a catch for Justin Long out to the 26-yard line. This defense needs to stop. They're not only are they physically getting beaten mentally, they'd be getting torched down here. Delaware goes again with a quick snap. And the handoff to Jermaine Bennett. And he's near another first down at the 30-yard line. Sean McCune made the tackle for Colgate. As we took down nine minutes left in the first half. Colgate and Delaware playing for the Division I AA National Championship. On a cold and occasionally snowy night here in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Tom McDonough, Rod Gilmore, Mike Golick, and Rob Stone. First meeting between these two teams since 1982 when they met in the first round of the playoffs. And Delaware beat Colgate at Delaware Stadium. They went to the national championship game that year. The last time they were in the title game, they lost to Eastern Kentucky. 17-14 in Wichita Falls, Texas. On 
short yardage. It's Jermaine Bennett carrying for the first down. He needed less than a yard and got a couple out to the 32. Good play. Nothing fancy. Just keep moving the chains. You see that Delaware, a lot of the quarterback and receivers looking at the sidelines. There's coaches over there giving hand signals as to the play that's going on. Then Hall will look and tell his line if it's a pass, what the protection is or what the run scheme is going to be. Three wide receivers. And Bennett the back as Hall goes out of the gun. And Bennett taken down immediately by Adam Lehman, the junior from New Albany, Ohio, in the Columbus area. He had a career-high six tackles in their opening round playoff win against UMass. Quick throw and a catch by Long. He scoots up the sideline and has another first down for Delaware. Out of bounds at the 46-yard line. Delaware's doing a really nice job of controlling the tempo changing the pace they get to the line of scrimmage and they take their time and then they'll come up and they'll hurry up and catch colgate sleeping and run a play you just enough to keep them off their feet you should only get caught so many times you do this colgate defense you get the guy i know they're looking at the sideline for the call but if you see him getting ready to snap play something call something play it get in front of the man and play it They played about three different tempos. The fast is what they call their indie tempo. When they look to the sideline, see the coaches rolling their fists like a basketball official calling traveling. That means we want to go as fast as we can. And obviously they've gotten that signal a couple of times. Bennett, the ball carrier out to the 49-yard line, tackled by Tem Lukabu. And we're midway through the second quarter now. Delaware in control, 20 to nothing. Wow. That's a lot going on on the sidelines. <laughs> it was so easy playing defense. <laughs> Four, three, cover ten, over, under. This terminology now, and offense is unbelievable. This is the spread offense directed by offensive coordinator Kirk Sharaka, one of the bright young minds in college coaching, just 38 years old. All with a lot of time, now running out of time, and he is sacked by Jared Nepa who's been the defensive star of the night so far for Colgate. The sophomore from Carbondale, Pennsylvania. He was a quarterback in high school. They need to finish this one off, guys. Colgate needs to get a stop here and kind of regroup a little bit. Force a punt. They won't have very good field position if they can get this stop even, but they need to do it. That defense has been on the field a while. Third and seven from just shy of midfield. Three wide receivers all to the right. Blitz coming for Colgate. Hall does not get away this time. Taken down back at the 46-yard line. The nickelback Chris Williams coming in on the blitz involved in the play. Well, that's, that's what we hadn't seen earlier, guys, is pressure on Andy Hall. He was able to pick a lane and run when he wanted to run, or he had time to pat the ball and throw when he wanted to throw. Now, all of a sudden, he's got a little bit of Colgate in his face. Mike Weber punting with the win this time. Going to walk on now on scholarship. Taking advantage of that gusty breeze. J.B. Gerald let it go, and it's into the end zone. Great effort by Jamie Rotunda, but he couldn't down it. 54-yard punt, a net of 34. Colgate goes back of the attack, needing something. my figure. Jets 
and untamed, a new cologne for men. Coca-Cola brings you championship expressions. for Colgate fellas as they go back on offense from the 20 they are down 20 to nothing Chris Brown I think is gonna have to start making something happen here with his feet 463 yards rushing you know he's gonna have to start to try and get this defense on their heels a little bit maybe open up some lanes for branch that way here is Jamal branch the leading rusher of the nation a nice cut back, and he's out to the 26. Tackled there by Mondo Davis. Sean McDonough along with Rod Gilmore and Mike Golick. A lot of time left, guys. I mean, there's no reason for Colgate, I would think, to change anything that's got them to this point in the season. I, I think you're right. They shouldn't panic right now. They just need a, one score before halftime to get back in, and whether it's a touchdown or a field goal, they need something positive. Sustained drives out of, in, a, in a good drive, not, not a trick player. I mean, they need to know and get the confidence that they can sustain a drive against this Delaware defense. Oh, I'm sure they take the trick play. <laughs> they run a big trick no. play team. Branch has a first down out to the 31-yard line. The ball was from Mashpee, Massachusetts on Cape Cod. Went to Falmouth High School on Cape Cod. And then went to New Hampton Prep in New Hampshire, where he broke all the rushing records of Marv Hubbard. Yeah, how about that? Went on to the NFL, of course, with the Raiders, one of the great uh -huh. players in Colgate history. Mark Van Egan, another former Raider who played his college football at Colgate. Eugene Robinson, a longtime NFL defensive back, also a former Red Raider. Now just the Raiders. Throws to Luke Graham. Sidney Hogabrook took him out. Let's learn a little bit more about Jamal Branch from Rob Stone. Yeah, the Jamal Branch family tree, an interesting one. His mother, a Native American from the Wampanoag tribe, in which his grandfather was actually chief of at one time, and his father, a blocking back at the University of Pittsburgh, where he blocked for some running back named Tony Dorsett and Gola. How many times you see that guy in your rearview mirror? What is that about, man? Come on, I tackled Tony Dorsett. I, he never... All right, never mind. Yeah, I, can't yeah. even, I can't even lie about that. <laughs> Dorsett was so good at not taking on the full impact of it. He was tough out. Well, the defense was ready for Branch as soon as he got the pitch. The entire Blue Hen defense in pursuit. Headed Mondo Davis with the initial hit, but nothing doing there. A loss of a yard, in fact. And it'll be third down from the 37. They'll need four to move the chain. Well, you see the penetration of the front four of Delaware's defensive line. They get into the backfield quickly. They're not a huge front four, but they have speed and quickness as well. They do, and if they're when they're eating up space, those linebackers come in and fill like Mondo Davis. And I love the fans, the Delaware fans, whenever the announcer says that Mondo Davis made the tackle, they all give that chat. Mondo! Uh, he could come quite the cult hero for Delaware. You do that very well. You like too. that Mondo? The guy who couldn't tackle Tony Dorsett. Uh -huh. Here's Brown. He appears to have the first down. Needed the 41, got the 42 before Kyle Campbell, a freshman who was a walk-on, but he earned a scholarship very quickly. Made the tackle. He's out of the Naval Academy prep school. Got there and decided, I don't want to go on to the Naval Academy. The military life isn't for me. So now he's at Delaware as a civil engineering major with a minor in economics. One of 14 players from these two teams combined from the state of Georgia. And there's just a stone throw away from Georgia right on the Tennessee-Georgia border here in Chattanooga. On the delay, it's Branch. Making his way to the 45-yard line, a gain of two. Tackled by Sean Johnson. Well, one of the 
things I think we've seen from Colgate is to try and take advantage of the aggressiveness of Sean Johnson. On the first down play, they ran inside him to let him go up the field, and now they come back with a delay again to let him get up the field and try and counter him that way. You know, what's impressive is he can catch it from the backside. And talking to him last night, he said the biggest thing he needs to work on is his strength. He said he never, he didn't really work out a whole lot uh, in high school, all the way till his freshman year at Duke. But speed has certainly not been a concern for him. He can run you down. What a change for him. A catch made. Inbounds by Luke Graham for a first down to the 45. Johnson, while he was at Duke in his three seasons that he played, not counting his redshirt year, Duke was 2-32. and 32. Yeah. He said, uh, you know what, he said, at some point you just have enough. He, he loved the school, had a ball there, but he said, I, I just need to go to another program. He wanted to go to Fordham where his brother was playing to play with his brother, but they wouldn't accept graduates there, so. They can't uh, be a fifth-year right. senior. But I, I don't I don't get that. He was all conference in the ACC, and he already had his degree from Duke, and you leave your last year? I don't, I don't get it. Guess, guess two and 32 will do it. Well, he might be a national champion when this one is over. Mark Moore made the tackle on Chris Brown. This is what's happening now. Guys just said Chris Brown's got to take over a little bit here, and he is. This is a design play, quarterback draw, great job, good block by Guglielmati out in front. This now your back your backers have to have to wait and see what Chris Brown is going to do. That's when you can start throwing over the top of him. Guglielmati looked like Marv Hubbard That's on that nice one. Oh, yeah, nice block. Second good drive in a roll for Colgate. They turned it over on downs deep in Delaware territory last time. Time a factor now, a minute 20 left in the half. All three timeouts left for each team. Branch on second and short did not get a first down. You think they might use their first time out here, fellas? And they will. They heard you, Sean. Good job. Timeout called by Coach Dick Biddle. Like Sean Johnson, he's a Duke graduate. Back in a moment. The joy of stays of Bowie, my team gives to me. Tailbacks are sweeping, quarterbacks are throwing, whistle the blowing, head coach is screaming. It's the best week on TV. Capital One Bowl Week begins Monday on ESPN. I can't well, believe this, you run it up here. This is going to be I cannot believe hey, what's going on. Oh, you guys are arguing. This is awkward. Hey, listen, did you get what you wanted? Yeah, sort of. We got... No. no. You have Comcast Digital Cable at home? Yes, yeah. we do. You got on demand. What are we waiting for? Come on, let's get out of here. Come on. Come what? on. Oh, going? Come Why on. are we following him? Yeah, nice place, guys. You paint that? Okay. This is your on-demand menu. Now, when you want a movie, you just click here, pick the movie you want, and hey, there it is. You can even fast forward, <laughs> pause, rewind, all that stuff. Pretty awesome, right? Oh, hold on, watch this, I'll get it. Hello. Yeah, they're kind of busy right now. They're watching on demand. Yeah, they'll call you back. Okay, bye-bye. I think it was your mom. What? Video store? You've got on demand with Comcast Digital Cable. Try it tonight. Dude. The NCAA Division I AA Championship. Brought to you by Pontiac. Official performance machines of the NCAA. And by Coca-Cola. Let's make it real. And welcome back to the Division I AA Football National Championship game from Chattanooga, Tennessee. Left in the half. Colgate with a 10th. Trying to get on the board as we take a look at the ESPN game track. Well, it started with Paul being just spectacular in the first quarter, throwing the ball, tucking the ball under and running and doing his thing, having a great first half. Well, he definitely set it up for uh, the first touchdown to Jenkins and then also to uh, Jermaine Bennett. Hall did a lot of the work here. Those guys reaped the benefit getting into the end zone, but Hall, who hasn't thrown the ball in practice because of the, the shoulder injury to the non-throwing arm, you know, has been uh, has really, really toughed it out and they're playing very, very well tonight. Big third and two for Colgate. Tenth play of the drive. Out of the gun. Brown keeps it. 
And he gets stopped to the line of scrimmage. It'll be fourth and two. So here we go again, guys. Third and two, fourth and two. And uh, Branch hasn't touched it yet in two consecutive drives. Well, at least it was a little better call there. The only problem is you're almost giving it away. The linebackers never, ever dropped. They stared at, uh, at Brown. And, and as soon uh, as they saw him coming to the line, they filled. And how about the pace at which they're moving here? I mean, maybe they're afraid of turning it over on downs if they don't get it, but they need to be thinking about scoring here, and all kinds of time runs off the clock. Under 30 seconds to go. Brown. Yep, there he is. Sack for a loss back at the 40. Sean Johnson and Chris Mooney, and it was Mooney who got him on the ground. Sean Johnson again. In the corner. So Delaware takes over on downs with 20 seconds left in the half, leading 20 to nothing. Okay, do you remember anything before the piano hit your head? No. Name. You tell me. What city are we in? France? Hey, that's a wild mountain chicken sandwich from Wendy's. With their spicy chicken, Colby Jack, bacon, red onion. And a smoky sauce. A hot and smoky southwestern pepper sauce. And you can get it on a hamburger. Fantastico. For a wild flavor you can't forget, try our new wild mountain combos. Wendy's, it's better here. So, where was the Wendy's? France. And remember, you can eat great even late. I'll have a <laughs> TV. You don't want your gift of a DVD player or video game system to make the holidays blue because it can't be hooked up. So get a stereo RF modulator from Radio Shack. It delivers full stereo sound and hooks up your electronics to TVs without the proper input. Sorry, baby. I should have checked the TV. The stereo RF modulator from Radio Shack. You've got questions. We've got answers. I swim the 200. I study sociology. I grind out laps. I cram for tests. I race nationals. I take finals. And when I finish, I'll be ready to start. There are over 360,000 NCAA student athletes, and just about all of us will be going pro in something other than sports. 3 Davis, Martin May here coming up on the College Game Day Halftime Report. Joe Paterno is going to celebrate a birthday over the weekend, but he's not going to blow out the candles on his career. We'll talk about Ben Roethlisberger's decision and the new top dog in Athens. I'll tell you how good Ben Roethlisberger will be at the next level and where I think he's going to get drafted in the 2004 draft. And just in case, Georgia fans would... <gasps> We're talking athletic director, not coach, Sean. See you in a few seconds. That history-making selection at Georgia with their new AD and the gentleman with the details in 20 seconds. See how Delaware plays a good field position from their own 40 in all three timeouts, but they already lead 20 to nothing. Don't want to do anything that would give the Colgate a chance to score here in the final seconds. You see how this play goes, and that dictates whether you can use a timeout and try and do anything. Nah, just don't be greedy. Why not? Don't be greedy. This is the time to be greedy. Take a chance. Something bad could happen. Just go in 20 nothing. All getting greedy. Throws incomplete. Caught by Boulder, but out of bounds along the Colgate sideline with 13 seconds left in the half. I don't know. I'm all for greed. Especially when you have the wind <laughs> at your back. You can get somewhat, somewhat in the area. You got a lot of wind at your back. It's cost-benefit. You know, the, the, the benefit here, the likelihood of having something great happen where you get points with 13 seconds, not real high. You know, but you take the risk here. I'm a risk-taker. I'm a uh, risk-taker. All right, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, you have Hall, who doesn't go throw ahead. many interceptions. He had gone 129 without an interception, 129 passes before he threw one last week against Wofford. They're sending four players very deep in a Hail Mary-type play, but Hall can't uncork one, and he's sacked. Back at the 31-yard line by Robert Hanna. The third sack of the half for Colgate. And gentlemen, it's 20 to nothing, but Colgate really wasn't outplayed as much as the score would indicate. Delaware, the short field after mistakes, a bad yep. punt snap and a turnover. A couple of mistakes cost you, and you're down 20 zip. Delaware's doing what they've done the whole post, uh, postseason so far. Jump on you quick. Let's see how Colgate responds in the second half. 